Good morning. I've got just about half an hour to give you the essence of a 5,000 year old mystical tradition. So I plan to talk very fast. But I think we can do it in just a couple of songs. So that's what we're going to do. It's a little early to sing, maybe, but we're going to give it a shot. The first one is from the Hasidic tradition. And it's, we're going to do the English version, the translation by David, Rabbi David Zeller. And it's just called I Am Alive. So I'm going to give it to you bit by bit, and we'll make it work. Starts out like all Hasidic melody uh, songs do, with just li la li. So it just goes like this. I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. I'm alive. It's this affirmation that you are alive. Now, you couldn't prove it from the way you sang it. <laughs> so let's, let's try it again. I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. I'm alive. I and mean, that's this amazing thing, that you exist. I don't know how old you say you are if you actually say your age, but whatever it is, you have to add 3.8 billion years to it. And, and the reason we don't is because the cake's too big. <laughs> You're going to put all those candles on it. But you have to add those years because it took three, uh, not three, it took 13.8 uh, billion years to get to you. I mean, how amazing is that? You're the latest expression of this in, not infinite exactly, but this, this ancient ongoing process of happening that I call God, that Judaism calls God. The name for God that's revealed at the burning bush to Moses is the, the four-letter name you can't pronounce. yud Hey vav Hey or Y-H-V-H. It's usually translated as Lord, which is horrible. Lord is static, Lord is hierarchical, and Lord is masculine. The actual Hebrew is a verb. It's not even a noun. It's a verb. It means what's happening. God is the happening, happening as everything that is happening. And that's you in, this, in your unique happening. So we start out with that. But then if you just stay with that, you end up being highly narcissistic and you think that you're special and you forget that everybody else is also a manifesting of God. So the second part of the song asks a question even though it comes out, because I can never get the inflection right, even though it's hard to know it's a question, I'm telling you it's a question. And who is this aliveness I am? And who is this aliveness I am? And who is this aliveness I am? I'll hold the answer to a minute. <laughs> so let's put the first part and the second part together. Yeah, I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. Yeah, I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. Yeah, I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive, I'm alive. And who is this aliveness I am? And who is this aliveness I am? And who is this aliveness I am? If not the Holy Blessed One, if not the Holy Blessed One. Your aliveness is God. Whatever the name of God you want, whether it's you know, Allah, Adonai, Brahman, Dharmakaya, Tao, uh, the, God the Father, God the Mother. I mean, you know, nature, pick, pick your favorite name and know that it's wrong. <laughs> because God has got to be beyond naming, because names are for nouns and God's a verb. But whatever it is, whatever way you get into that reality, that reality is who you really are. And knowing that is key to everything. 
when you know that, you know that we're all connected, and, and not just humans, right? Humans and all other living beings, and not just living beings. The chair you're sitting on is no less the divine happening than you are, and deserves no less respect and care than any other manifesting of God. So let's sing it again, but if you can, maybe we'll stand up, because we'll do the next one, it will be more contemplative. So, so we're going to, if you, if you can, if you can't stand up, don't worry about it, all right? Or if you're an Orthodox Jew and you want to stand up and sit down and stand up and sit down, do that. I don't care. Good exercise. Yeah, I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. Yeah, I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. Yeah, I did it, I did it, I did I die, I am alive. I'm alive. And who is this aliveness? I am. And who? Is this aliveness? I am. And who is this aliveness? I am, if not the Holy Blessed One. Okay, you can sit down. What's the baby's name? Piper? Piper? Okay, so Piper just didn't walk in. <laughs> he, was, he was carried in. But I'll tell you a quick story. I don't know, I can't see who's here, but I don't know if Cynthia Bourgeau is here. Of course not. Why would she get up that early? But okay. <laughs> so Cynthia and I have been friends for a very long time, and I taught her this song, and she taught this song to her granddaughter when she was just probably a little older than Piper. And she used to sing it all the time. But she put her own twist on it. Her name was Zoe. And she used to go, yeah, I did it, I did I did I die, I am alive. Yeah, I did it, I did I did I die, I am alive. Yeah, I did it, I did I did I die, I'm Zoe! <laughs> right? Because Piper is unique. You are, I am, all beings are absolutely unique expressions of this one thing. But we forget. So every morning, you want to bring up the slide? Every morning... Observing Jews try to remind themselves that this is true. So we have this prayer. We we'll use the transliteration on the lower left. Elohai nishema shenatata bi tehorahi. It means, my God, the soul, the breath, spirit, however you want to understand that, uh, you have given me is pure. Your truest nature is pure. Pure, not simply in sinless. I mean, I have lots of Catholic friends who are always obsessing about original sin, and I say, I can fix it for you. Become a Jew. <laughs> we never heard of it. <laughs> but your true essence is the divine, and nothing can despoil that. The egoic you can do all kinds of harm, but if you can tap regularly into the divine dimension that is your truest nature, then you can correct any mistakes that you've made, and you can move the world deeper and deeper into compassion and wisdom. But you have to remember, so we chant this every morning. This is how it goes. Elohai nishema shenatatabi Tehorahi Elohai Nishema Shenatatabi Tehorahi So if you need to watch the words, watch the words. Once you get it, though, you can close your eyes and just try to sense, get that felt sense that you are this divine awakening as you at this very moment, this divine happening as you at this very moment. Elohai nishema shenatatabi tehorahi Elohai nishema shenatatabi Tehorahi Elohai nishema shenatatabi 
Te ho rahi Elohai nishema shena tatabi Te ho rahi One more time. Elohai nishema shena tatabi Te ho Rahi Elohai Nishema Shena Tatabi Teho Rahi. Your fundamental nature is Torah, pure. Now, you notice that your fundamental nature in Hebrew is feminine. All dimensions of soul, and there are five in the Kabbalah, five in Jewish mysticism, body, heart, mind, soul, and spirit. All dimensions of soul, all dimensions of awareness are feminine. The experience of God, despite the traditional language, if you read the rabbis, when they, have the, the, uh, when they sense a revelation of God or they sense the presence of God, they, when they hear a voice, they speak of a term called bat kol, the daughter's voice when they feel the presence of the divine, they call it Shekhinah, which is feminine, means the presence of the divine. Judaism, despite its outward masculinity and its political incorrectness regarding women, is at the spiritual level fundamentally feminine. And wisdom, which is what the Kabbalah, what the mystical system is all about. Wisdom herself is feminine. If you read in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 22, all of a sudden, this woman starts talking. So her name in Hebrew is Chochmah. In the Greek, when it's translated to the Greek Bible, it's Sophia. It's wisdom. When the book of John says, in the beginning was the Logos, we translate it as word. The Chinese and the Chinese New Testament translate it as Tao. What a difference between the word and Tao. But the word in Greek, logos, is wisdom. And whether we're talking about the creation story in the prologue uh, in, in the Gospel according to John, or we're calling, uh, talking about the creation story in the book of Proverbs, what we discover is that the world is a manifesting of the Divine Mother, is a manifesting of the feminine. God manifesting has, in, in these traditions, has this feminine quality. And one of the things that means, without romanticizing or fetishizing feminine versus masculine, one of the things this means is the realization of the interconnectedness of everything. There's only this singular reality manifesting in all these forms. You know, in the Vedanta Hindu tradition that I practice, uh, well, <laughs> that I signed up to practice and I always forget to practice, but in the Vedanta tradition, you know, they use that wonderful analogy of the ocean and the wave. You know, think of the infinite divine as an infinite ocean, and it manifests in infinite waves. You're a wave of God. The mistake we make is when we think we're all of God, as opposed to just realizing, no, God is all of us. The wave is never the entirety of the ocean, but the ocean fills the entire wave. And compassion comes when you recognize the oceanic as yourself and everyone else. That's why it says, in Leviticus, love your neighbor as yourself. I taught Bible for 10 years in the university and my students would always misquote it. They would say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's Oprah, <laughs> not Torah, right? The wisdom tradition says, love your neighbor as yourself because your neighbor is yourself. You are the neighbor, you are the stranger, you are the other, they are also you, and the whole thing is God. And that's why you can love neighbor and stranger. And as Jesus says, you know, pray for those, for your enemies. It's interesting that you can still have enemies. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works, but I'll take his word for it. But you love them. It seems to me if I love my enemies, they're not my enemies, but okay. And how can you do this? Because you realize that even your enemy is you. 
it's part of, you know, she or he are part of your own self. Rabbi Nachman of Braslav, the great grandson of the founder of Hasidic Judaism, the Baal Shem Tov, taught in the 1800s. He said, when we read love your neighbor as yourself, we're misunderstanding it because we're misreading it. The Hebrew says, ve'ahavta l'reecha kamocha. Ve'ahavta, and you shall love. L'reecha, re'echa, is re is neighbor, echa is your. So, um, and you shall love your neighbor kamocha as yourself. He says, you don't pronounce it re'echa. In the Hebrew Bible itself, not the printed ones you find in a synagogue, but the Hebrew Torah scroll itself, there are no vowels. And Jews are invited by the tradition to put in whatever vowels you want to see what wisdom you can find. And Reb Nachman changed re'echa to ra'echa. Ra is the word for evil. He says, don't just love your neighbor, love your evil. Love your shadow side, love your dark side. Because if you don't, you project it onto your neighbor, which makes them very difficult to love. We have to own our own shadows, individually, communally, you know, whatever, whatever identity group you, know, you want to you wanna associate with, religion, your, your ethnicity, your gender, your nation, they all have a shadow side. And we have to embrace that as our shadow and not battle it. It's not Luke versus Darth Vader. I mean, Darth is his father. <laughs> They're one family. It's recognizing the yin and the yang are part of the Tai Chi unity. When we go deep into this, we discover the next part of it, which is it's pure. Pure means not simply sinless. Pure means it has no content. It's contentless awareness. It's what Banki in the Zen tradition calls the unborn, what other Roshis call the, the no mind. It's an awareness that in and of itself clings to no content. It's operating in us right now. Let's just try this. Become aware of yourself sitting in the chair. Nothing mystical, nothing magical here. Just become aware of your butt in the seat. Notice how the seat holds your bottom up. Notice how the back of the seat is either supporting you or killing you. Just become aware of yourself sitting in the chair. And then ask yourself, who's aware of myself sitting in the chair? Is the awareness of you sitting in the chair the you who is sitting in the chair? Or is it something else? In the Jewish mystical tradition, it's something else. It includes the you sitting in the chair, but it's bigger. It's what is called in Judaism the ehiyeh, the I behind everything. The first, when Moses meets God at the burning bush, Moses says, so what's your name? And in a minute, God will say the yud heh vav the tetragrammaton, the name that cannot be pronounced, not to be mistaken for Voldemort. <laughs> but the name that in Hebrew is the verb to be, the, the, so the happening. But before God says that, God lets slip <clears throat> the truest name, Echia. I am. That's it. I am the I. Each of us has a piece of that I that we claim as our own. That's the ego. But behind that is this greater I. The eye that knows, that is aware of you sitting in the chair is not boundaried. It's, that's another uh, meaning of the word to horatz, pure. Not simply sinless, not simply contentless, but infinite, no boundaries, which means there's only one of them. The ultimate ehiyah that is manifesting as you is not different than the ultimate ehiyah manifesting as anyone else in this room. And you know that when you look into someone's eyes and see them as their divine self. When I'm in India, and you know, in India, we greet each other with you know, namaste, and the classic translation is, I bow to the divine within you. But I always, and I, I don't teach lay people, I only teach swamis, but when I'm teaching in India, I always urge my swamis not to say that in English. Don't say, I bow to the God within you. Say, I bow to the God who is you. 
don't make that dualistic distinction because it's pure, it's transparent, it's sinless, it, but it's unbounded, so it's also the flesh. So in Judaism, it manifests in these five dimensions, body, heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Your physical body is divine. Your emotional life, no matter how troubled, no matter how troubled your body is, it's divine. No matter how troubled your emotions are, they're divine. No matter how conflicted your thinking is, the mind level, it's divine. The next two, they're called Chaya and Yechida. Chaya, and that's not, you know, Brooklyn for, oh, it's Chaya consciousness. That's not what I mean. <laughs> chaya, from the word Chaya, life. It's the awareness that everything is interconnected. It's what the Buddhists call satityat pram, uh, satyitat, satyit, now I can't even pronounce it myself. Yeah, somebody said it. Sat, say it again? Pratityat samutpada. There we go. I only say it to impress you, and look, I couldn't even do it. So, the dependent co-origination, that everything is arising together. That's what Chaya consciousness knows. But then there's the final, or, or the, the, the higher one, the more inclusive one, better than higher. It's not really a hierarchy. It's more like Russian nesting dolls. And the one that holds the whole thing together is Yechida, non-duality. That's the ultimate I that, that is everything. And it's, they're all operating in us at the same time. And we have to remind ourselves. So we chant. Elohai nishema shenatsa tsabi teho rahi. Elohai nishema shenatsa tsabi teho rahi. Elohai nishema. Shenatatabi Teho Rahi Elohai Nishema Shenatatabi Teho Rahi. If you can do that in the morning, that's great. Here's another way to use it. When you're, when you're about to blow your stack, when you're about to just let all of that angst and fear and anger and aggression out on someone because you haven't owned your own shadow and you've projected it onto them and you just let them have it. And that's what marriage is for. <laughs> Not supposed to be, but that's how mine works. But anyway. Now, actually, marriage in the book of Genesis, it tells you the relationship between uh, partners in a, in a marriage or, or any kind of relationship, really, but in a deep, authentic relationship. The relationship between partners is called Ezer Konegdo. Most Bibles speak of the woman in the Genesis story with Adam, who Adam later names Eve, uh, as his helpmate, you know, his gal Friday, except they were created, I think, on, on Thursday. But anyway... <laughs> You know, that's not what Ezer Konegdo means. Ezer means helper. Konegdo means against you. The relationship is supposed to be one of helping the other by being their loyal opposition, seeing the divine that they have lost and helping them find it again, mostly by telling them how stupid they are. <laughs> no, wait, that's my marriage. But you, you get, you know... It's not, it's not necessarily one that's frictionless. If you have a, <clears throat> many spiritual teachers, many spiritual teachers are just abusive. I'm not talking about them. But many spiritual teachers, they're just not these little saintly people who, who say, oh, whatever it is, that's, that's your mother. It's fine, I love you, that's a Jewish mother. Whatever, it's great. It's that and your father, your Jewish father goes, no, that's no good. <laughs> I, I can't afford therapy, so I just do this here. It's this, it's this tension that's created by two people who love each other enough to help each other try to awaken to this divine reality of which each of us is a manifestation. That's the, the way we're supposed to operate with everybody. That's what it is really to love your neighbor as yourself, not simply to accept them, but to help them reclaim their divinity if they've forgotten it. 
as they help you do the same. In the Kabbalah, there's another chant that gives to this, goes to the same teaching. The words, I, I don't have an overhead because I'm going to sing it to you and you're going to sing it back to me. The words are very simple. Echad echad. Now, if you can't get the ch, that's okay. <laughs> if you can do it, be careful about the back of the head of the person in front of you. <laughs> if you had breakfast, you don't want to see it in their hair. Right? So just try that. Echad echad means one into one. One becomes one. That's the English. We'll sing both. And the idea, because in Hebrew there's no capital letters or lowercase letters, so the one could be the capital one becoming the each individual one, and or it can be each individual one realizing itself as the capital one. And it doesn't make any difference, because it's just this continuous uh, flow of one into one. So I'm going to sing it so you get the tune, but I'm going to sing it to you, and you're going to sing it back to me. The last time I did this was with 5,000 Japanese Buddhists in Kyoto. <laughs> and they were really good about it. <laughs> they didn't know English, and they didn't know Hebrew, but they were doing it anyway. <laughs> and we, we got everybody up and dancing around and going a little crazy, which I'm going to invite you to do as it gets a little faster. And when it was over, the head monk came over to me and he said, he didn't know Japanese people could do that. Because <laughs> he's telling them to sit quiet, you know, on the, on the cushions. And I'm saying, no, get up and, and let's dance. So, echad be echad. I'll sing it and then you sing it back to me. And it'll go faster and then we should get up and see how crazy we can get. Echad bi echad, 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 echad. So you got the idea that the first one is sort of on one level, then it goes up a notch. You haven't got the idea that you're not supposed to do it when I'm doing it. <laughs> it's, it's call and response. <laughs> you know, think of me as the bold face and you as the plain text in a hymnal or something. But don't worry about it. If you, if you want to take my spot, it's fine. It's fine. So um, we're going to start. That's how it goes. The English is one into one. One becomes one, one into one, one becomes one, one into one, one becomes one, one into one, one becomes one. Echad be echad, echad be echad, echad be echad, echad be echad. Echad be echad, echad be echad, echad be echad, echad be echad. So let's see if we can stand up. Echad be echad, 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 echad be echad. Echan be echad, 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 one becomes one, one into one, one becomes one, one into one, one becomes one, one into one, one becomes one, one into one. Echad be echad, 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 echad be echad. Now find someone to to look at. 
It could be one person, it could be more than one person. But before we go back into silence, we're going to do a blessing of one another for today and for the week at the festival. The magic of the blessing comes from being able to do the priestly sign of blessing or the Vulcan sign of hi, goodbye. <laughs> right? So that's what you're going to do. If you can do it, you're either Jewish or a Vulcan. If you can't do it, channel your inner Spock and we'll see where it goes. But you want to hold this, if you can put it on someone's head, that's a powerful way to do it. If you want to just aim it at someone, that's a powerful way to do it. I'm going to read the Hebrew, and then I'm going to feed you the English and say it to someone. All right? Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha. May truth and wisdom bless and protect you. Yeah, if you can do the Hebrew, that's great. If you just stick with English, don't, that's perfect. May you know the divine face as your face and be a beacon of grace. May you know the divine face as every face. and bring peace to all you meet. So now we're going to take a seat and we'll sit in silence for a little bit.
Lech b'shalom. Go in peace. Thank you so much, Rabbi Rami. And thank you, everyone. We'll see you for the next session at 10 o'clock.